Okay, so, question two. The diagram shows the curve y equals log base 10 of 2x plus 1. Uh, we can't integrate this, can we? So that's why we just go straight in with a function like this. Use the diffusion rule with four strips, each of which 1.5, to find an approximation of the area of the region bound by the curve and so on. Right. Um, four strips. Now, this is quite an important thing. Four strips requires five values, doesn't it? Because every strip has a value at the start and end of it. So if we've got four strips, it's like I find that my hand is quite useful to remind me what's going on with this. So there's, there's a hand. You've seen one before, and uh, there are four gaps between fingers, and there are five fingers. So each of the fingers is a, is a value with the, the four strips. Isn't that, isn't that great? That's what hands were invented for. Now, um, what we need to do then is to, to, to work out the values that give us these uh, these things. I was taught this by Steve, and he always insisted on a special table of values. It's very, very particular about this. So here we've got x and y. You don't need a table of values, but I like them. Um, the values would be, when we're starting at 4, each strip is of width 1.5, so that's 5.5, 7, yeah, 8.5, and 10. And the reason we do a table is just to remind us that we're treating the first and last ones different to the rest. So this one is if you sub 4 into this, you get log of 9, 2 times 4 plus 1. If we sub 5.5 uh, sub, sub into this, you get 12, I think. And this one would be 15. Ah, oh, well, it matters. And this would be log 21. Oh, okay. And all, all the, it's not a big deal. All this is doing is reminding me that when I go on to the next stage, I'm going to deal with the first and last ones from this column, and I'm going to double the ones from this column. It does, it's not a big deal, but I just find it as a helpful little visual aid. So the area is a half. The step size, the, the width, which is 1.5. And then we're doing the first and the last, so we've kept them separate to remind us to put them in there, plus twice all the others. Now, I've, I've taken the decision to put these exact into my formula, and so when I type into my calculator I'm putting exact values in. It's a little bit over the top. I have a slight obsession with exactness. And you don't really need to do this. You can put these values in. You can work them out in the table and put them into a suitable number of decimal places. Um, but, but we want to make sure we don't introduce any rounding errors. So, so make sure that you're not just putting in a really round of Yeah. You know, So, so you if you've write got, for example, log 0.9542 equals A, and then you put it into your formula, R, A plus B plus um, you, you probably could do, but I think, I think it'd be nicer to show you actually put the numbers in. I think it's play safe. Mm -hmm. right. um, we get, at the end of this, I think, 6.97. To three significant figures. Okay. But this was a this wasn't the most straightforward one of these because this is quite unusual having this value of 1.5 as the as the width of the value. You need to be really careful to make sure you put that in there. Don't forget, put that in. And I have seen this done wrong a few times as well. Be really careful typing this in. And make sure you put your brackets in there. <coughs> Because the danger is that you end up doing a half of 1.5 times log 9, and having the rest of it without it being so rocky. Right. Um, part 2. Explain why this approximation is an underestimate. Well, they gave you what the curve looks like. It was there. 
and you've done the trapezium rule on this between these these values. So, so your approximation is an underestimate because the curve is curving over the top of each trapezium, and that's all you need to say for one mark. The curve it was part two, wasn't it? The curves sounds like an odd sentence to write over the top of each trapezium. And if you want to emphasize it with a diagram, then draw a little trapezium and show a curve curving over the top of it and give that kind of illustration of what's But do it in words as well, don't just draw the diagram on the side. <coughs> there we go, that was question two on the exam paper, and it goes five marks, which is, you know, seven or eight percent. Set of marks for not doing an awful lot of hard work. Um, question seven. Now, this is an awful lot of marks. This is about 15% of the paper. Eight, three marks, 11 marks. Um, remember what we talked about earlier? Shh. Remember what we talked about earlier? This is part A and B. So, so we've got two unconnected bits of stuff, both about integration. So let's deal with part A first, because that's not too bad. The integral of <coughs> x squared plus 4 times x minus 6 dx. Now, um, this is a little bit unusual because we've got two things multiplied together. But it turns out actually that, that even once we get into the other 60 here, the easiest way to deal with this is to multiply out brackets. That's, that's what we would do with this. There's no neat tricks to make this any better later on. So if we carefully multiply out brackets here, we're going to do x squared times x, get x cubed, minus 6x squared, <coughs> plus 4x, minus 24, <coughs> dx. And then we're going to integrate it. Remember what we said, we add 1 to the power, we divide by the new power, so x cubed becomes x to the 4 over 4. Um, 6x squared goes to 6x cubed over 3, and we'll write it like that for now. We'll sort it out in a minute. This would be 4x squared over 2, 24x. I will remember, because we haven't got any limits, any values on the integral sign, we need to write plus c at the end of that. And I want to tidy this up a little bit more. x to the 4 over 4 minus 2x cubed plus 2x squared minus 24x plus c. That's how that was. Three marks just for doing that. So there we go. Right. Now we've got a little bit more to work at the next part. Um, it, looks, it looks a little bit scary to start with, but actually, you, know, you look at this and you think these two things are intersecting. Yikes, I'm going to have to work out where they intersect and then do some stuff with that. But actually, the question is nowhere near as bad as it might be. The diagram shows two curves which intersect at the point 1, 6. So, so we're told... Oh, I need to align my board, don't I? There we go. We're told that, that that red dotted line there down the middle is when x equals 1. <coughs> OK. Um, use integration to find the area of the shaded region enclosed by the two curves. Well, firstly, we need to decide which curve is which. Well, uh, let's start by thinking of an easy value. If x equals zero, <coughs> this curve is a bit of a nightmare. It would be 8 divided by zero minus 2. So that one's got an asymptote of zero. This one, if x is zero, y is zero. 
So that curve there, the first one, that curve must be the 6x to the 3 over 2. And that curve there must be 8 over x squared minus 2. And remember, 8 over x squared, we learnt about this when we did differentiation before 1. We need to write it all in one line before we can integrate or differentiate. So that's 8x to the minus 2. Take away 2. <coughs> um, so that one's, this one's fine, isn't it? Because this one goes from 0 up to 1. And we'll just do our integration for that bit. This curve, we need to go from 1. And we need to know where it hits the x-axis. We need to find that out as well, don't we? So let's work that out. Um, that would be, so as we're doing part B, let's concentrate on this curve for a second. If y equals 0, it hits the x-axis, then 8 over x squared <coughs> minus 2 is equal to 0. <coughs> it, that's um, looking a little bit like we're dealing with one of our old core 1 <coughs> stealth quadratic kind of things, but actually it's a lot simpler than it looks. We've got 8 minus 2x squared is 0, if we multiply everything by x squared. And if we rearrange that, we end up saying x squared equals 4. Divide through by 2 and rearrange it. And if x squared equals 4, that means x equals plus or minus 2. But it's pretty obvious which one we're looking for. We want this point here. And there's the y-axis, this must be plus 2. So our diagram <coughs> is starting to take shape a little bit now. We've now found that that's the point 2 as well. <coughs> so with a little bit of, uh, of thinking things through, organising ourselves first before we dive into anything, we can now see we've got to integrate from 0 to 1, 6x <coughs> to 3 over 2. We're going to integrate from 1 to 2, 8x to the minus 2 minus 2. And that gives us the area that we want. So our area is the integral from 0 to 1 of 6x to the 3 over 2 dx plus the integral from 1 to 2 those are the things we have to work out 8x to the minus 2 minus 2 dx and we're eventually ready to do some proper integration the question did say as well I didn't say find the exact area. Okay, so it just wants us to find this area here. We will. We'll do it exactly. Okay, we're ready to integrate. We're going to keep it separate as two independent things that we're working at. Um, add 1 to the power and divide by the new power. So 6, if you add 1 to 3 over 2, what do you get? <coughs> Five over two. So six x to the power of five over two divided by five over two. Not anything too fancy just yet. And then the other one. Really careful with our powers. If we add one to minus two, what do we get? <coughs> minus one. So that's eight x to the minus one over minus one. And what happens if we integrate the constant? Integrate a number. We just get minus 2x out of that. Between 1 and 2. Now, I, I may have gone straight, if I was doing this on there, I may have gone straight to this line here, where I tidy this up. Of course, here we're dividing 6 by 5 over 2, which is the same as multiplying 6 by 2 fifths. <coughs> so that bit I'm going to write as being um, 12 over 5 and x to the 5 over 2. So we've got 1. Because it, we're doing 6 times 2 fifths. Oh, yeah. yeah, 6 times 2 would be 12. Five over five. Uh, this bit here, we've got um, 8x to the minus 1 over minus 1. <coughs> yeah, I, I feel I want to have that written a little bit more neatly. So this is minus 8 over x minus 2x. This 
this line probably isn't the centre, it's really it's about putting the numbers in, but I just wanted it to look a bit nice. That if we now sub in our values, this bit is going to become 12 fifths of 1 to the power of 5 over 2. Well, anything, uh, 1 to any power is still going to be 1, <coughs> so that's 12 fifths. Take away 12 fifths times 0, which is 0. And the other bit, we've got minus 8 over 2, minus 2 times 2, so take away 4. Take away minus 8 over 1, minus 2 times 1. So my first integral is just 12 over 5. My second integral, what have I got there? I've got minus 4, take away over 4, so negative 8. <coughs> and here I've got minus 8, take away over 2, so minus minus 10. And all together, I end up with 2 plus 12 over 5. So that's 22 over 5, <coughs> or 4.4, I'm write it like that, square units, although we don't really mind if you don't put it in the that, would be it. that was worth, that question that we've just done, <coughs> about 15% of the example. Are we ready to stop the video? I will leave that there. That's maths.